for a little bit over a year now, I've been using this 2020 M1 Mac Mini for everything from recording and editing music to recording and editing video, uploading video to YouTube, uploading audio to Spotify, Apple Music and SoundCloud, etc. I've used it for gaming, I've used it for Photoshop, I've used it for streaming Netflix, Disney Plus, Amazon Prime and other things. It is by far the best Mac I have ever used. But with Apple having released some seriously powerful new MacBook Pro models last year, and with murmurings of even more new MacBook Air and Mac Mini models just around the corner, should you consider picking up the M1 Mac Mini as your new music making workstation? The short answer is yes. Yes, you should. Okay, okay, the long answer is a wee bit more complicated. I'm Patrick, this is the Garage Band Guide, and here's why you should still consider the M1 Mac Mini if you're thinking about picking up a new Mac to make music in GarageBand or Logic Pro. Straight away, the number one best thing about this M1 Mac Mini, and all of the M1 Mac lineup to be fair, is price to performance. You're getting some serious bang for your buck here. Remember, Apple launched the M1 line of Macs back at the tail end of 2020 as entry-level computers. Now, traditionally, Intel-based entry-level Macs have been slow, sluggish, and just all-around disappointments, really. Especially the Mac Mini, which last saw an entry-level refresh way back in 2018 with an i3 processor. Which was great for sending email, surfing the web, and that's about it. The entry-level M1 Mac Mini is a totally different story. I famously pitted my 16GB model M1 Mac Mini when I first got it against my 32GB RAM i7 iMac using the Logic Benchmark, which essentially loads up a stupidly taxing Logic Pro project with several hundred effect-laden tracks in it, and then you turn on as many as you can until your Mac gives up the ghost. My iMac managed a pretty respectable 51 tracks, while the M1 Mac Mini with half the RAM, remember, managed 90 tracks. Seriously impressive stuff, especially considering that the iMac cost over 2,000 quid when new and had received a RAM upgrade since then, and the 16 gigabyte RAM half a terabyte storage Mac Mini that I got cost half that. My good friend Anne Adelaide's hunkiest bloke, 2011 runner-up Pete Johns and I talked about this very subject in the latest episode of his weekly YouTube livestream. Here's what we had to say about the value of Apple's current M1 Mac lineup. Honestly, if you are a beginner or if you are going to get into recording music with GarageBand or producing music with GarageBand, don't buy a shiny new MacBook Pro with an M1 Max Ultra Extreme whatever. Um, yep. They're fantastic machines, um, really super powerful. You will not even tickle the underside of that power using GarageBand. Yep. And to a certain extent, depending on what kind of production level you're going to move on to, um, as a bedroom or home recording person, artist thing, you don't need it. Um, you're going to be just throwing money into a super powerful machine that you are not going to use half of the power from. So yeah. I would still say at this point, um, even though we've got kind of this talk of new Macs coming in March mm. and new Mac minis mm -hmm. coming in March, I would absolutely still recommend an M1 machine, um, yep. whether that's an M1 Mac mini, whether that's an M1 MacBook Air or eh, maybe not a MacBook Pro, to be fair. Um, we'll just... <laughs> 
get rid of the touch bar that's fine just leave that so um the difference yeah. is that two years ago there's no way you could have recommended that anyone buy the the intel based macbook air yeah. to run no even way. garage band because it would just grind away and grind to a halt well yeah. apple have completely engineered themselves into a corner here where they've made their um, entry-level base machines so powerful <laughs> that the vast majority of people do not need the shiny new super powerful macbook pros it's not like it was in the intel days um, your base level Intel machines were crap. The base yep. level M1 machines are despicably powerful. It's been a long time since you could say Apple's old motto, it just works with a straight face. But when it comes to this M1 Mac Mini, it definitely applies. So this is it then, right? The perfect Mac for someone looking to grab a music-making powerhouse that will make all of their GarageBand and or Logic Pro dreams come true. Right? 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 Eh, almost. It, it's almost there. There are a couple of issues that do hold this machine back, however. Reports of Bluetooth issues came flooding in shortly after the release of the M1 Mac Mini in particular, and there are still some users having issues to this day. Personally, I've never had any real problems. With either the official Apple Magic Mouse, the MX Master 3 mouse I currently use, or even this budget Logitech Pebble mouse. That goes for the official Apple keyboard as well. But if you dive into forums and help pages, you will see some users are having real problems. Apple have had over a year to fix this now and they're still not 100% there, which is definitely a bit disappointing. So just bear that in mind that these issues may tarnish what is an otherwise fantastic experience with these Mac Mini models. And so on to ports. Now you'll either be absolutely fine with the connection options available on the M1 Mac Mini, or you might want a few more options. On the back of the M1 Mac Mini, you've got obviously the input for your power cable. You've got two USB-A ports. You've got an HDMI port, two USB-C ports, a headphone jack, and an Ethernet port. Like I said, that might be enough for you. For me, the only thing missing here is an SD card reader, and I do need to use a dongle for that. Otherwise, the amount of ports here are just fine for me. Your mileage may vary though. Finally, it's just a wee silver square. That's it. You'll need a screen, and a keyboard, and a mouse. If by chance you already have all of that, then fantastic! You can get stuck right in straight away. If not, a simple search on Ask Jeeves will make you realise that there is a ridiculous amount of choice out there when it comes to Mac Mini setups. It can all get a little bit confusing. So check the linky in the dinky below this video where I've shared a couple of Mac Mini setups. The first one is my recommended Mac Mini setup for beginners. Everything you need to get started but definitely won't break the bank. You'll also find my personal Mac Mini setup. The screen I use, the audio interface I use, everything that I use on a daily basis to create music in GarageBand. When you're done taking a gander at that, check out this playlist next, where I share some of my favourite GarageBand gear. <laughs>